Welcome back, friends, and come on in for the best way of grinding out reputation, the Shifting Tombs. There aren't any requirements for Shifting Tombs except for getting into Menaphos, and it can be done either solo or as a group. I would personally recommend doing this as a group because as you will see further on in my video, you will have a lot easier time getting everything done as quickly as possible in a group. Your first option for finding a group is to right click on the Shifting Tombs and just merely select the search function. This will get you a group of people that are in the world that you are currently using. At the time of recording this, World 2 is the most common world to do this on, but it may change because World 2 does have some lag issues. Alternatively, you can set up a group of people yourself and just join on in as a group every single time with the same group of five people. If you don't have a clan or a group of friends that are doing this, then you again can hop on over to World 2 as there are usually people looking to make a permanent group. It is recommended to try to find people with similar stats as you because there are some elements that are scaled to the level of the people in the tomb, all the way up to level 99 stats requirements. Uh, you don't actually need the level 99 stat, but it will slow you down a bit if you aren't max and have a max person with you. So let's start out with why are we doing shifting tombs in the first place? First off, the main reason why people do this is for reputation. This is the fastest way of grinding reputation. Obviously you can get faster reputation with obelisks, but those are limited amount of reputation that you can get for every single day. And these can be grinded for hours on end, the shifting tombs. Additionally, you can make some pretty decent money doing this or experience from this mini game. I was making on average two and a half million per hour while doing this, just from getting the feathers of Mott and from the coins. I did have the tier 5 Menaphos overall reputation increase, so you get a little bit of extra feathers uh, and a little bit of extra money. Go ahead and check my video down in the description down below. Uh, I will explain all the Menaphos reputation rewards to you if you don't know what I'm talking about. Alternatively, like I was saying, you can get a decent chunk of experience if you choose to toggle these statues or to turn on these het or the braziers here. You also have a very, very small chance of getting a new tier 82 dual wielding melee weapon if you happen to be extremely lucky, and those are going for a pretty decent profit. For this purpose of this video, I'm going to start out with a couple of solo tombs, that way I can take it slow and show you everything without having to slow down an entire group, or possibly even fail a couple of tombs while I'm trying to make this video for you all. The first element of shifting tombs that we want to describe are the urns. Now every single time you break one of these urns, it's going to give you a very small amount of corruption. You need to get a certain amount of corruption every single tomb, and this is individual per player, so you're going to have to get the corruption yourself. This is not shared among the group. The amount of corruption you get from all these depends on the different types. Now all three of these right here are urns, and as you can see they are all brown. The color of the urn is going to make a difference. Brown ones every single time are going to give you one corruption. The vases are going to be blue, and they're going to give you two and the vessels are going to give you four, and they are the color red. You can do this while running around, so it's not going to interrupt you while doing anything else. So you're going to want to get as much of these urns as possible. You don't want to leave any of them behind. One thing that they do give you is a super move here. Once you break five of these, it starts a time, and you will eventually be able to mine all these crystallized corruption extremely fast as you can see this giant blue, blue Kamehameha wave just came through here and broke quite a few of the mines all at the same time. The next element is going to be these crystallized corruption here. Now all you have to do again is left click on these and they will mine the corruption. As you can see here I had a super move so it cleared a long line of them. Unfortunately this time there was only one of them in that line so I only got one broken. Now every single time you clear one of these it does give you a small amount of corruption. I believe for only one it only gives you one piece of corruption and it does take quite a while to actually get that corruption. So I would recommend just skipping over any of these unless they are actually blocking your path. 
because they are really slow to mine. It may be worthwhile to also bring a crystal pickaxe or something else, one of your high level, higher level pickaxes, just to make sure that you can get through them quickly because occasionally it doesn't do it with just one attempt at it. Uh, there is a small chance of failing that. Uh, so it may even be worthwhile wearing something like the master, um, the magic golem outfit, the master mining outfit. Next up are going to be the treasure chests. So all you have to do with the treasure chest is just click on it. Now these do have a skilling requirement, so depending on which type of, let's call it corruption, is around the treasure chest, it's going to require a level in a different skill. Now I am currently maxed out, so you're not going to see any of those while I am doing any chests, but they do require you to have a level requirement up to level 99. So this is going to be why you're going to want to have people of a similar level to you while doing these. These are all, again, personalized, so you are going to have to get the number of chests all by yourself that they have up here. So as you can see, I need to get four chests in this tomb, and that means I'm going to individually have to get four chests. If somebody else has already opened it, all you're going to have to do is left click and search it. So when you are in a group, you're going to want to be calling out where all these chests are because they can help somebody else. They do give you some feathers of mott while you are, hopefully I'm pronouncing that right, while you're opening or you are searching them. I do not believe that is, there's any difference between whether or not you personally open them and you are searching them if somebody else has already opened them, but there may be a small difference. A couple other random things that you can get while opening these chests is I believe you can either get a cat or a gem, it's one of the two. So you're going to want to go ahead and start up the journal for Menaphos before doing as much shifting tombs as possible. Uh, I did forget to do that. I put up a public service announcement. Go ahead and check the links down below for that. Uh, and it shows you how to start up the Menaphos journal. Uh, again, you can get the tier 82 weapons from these. Now that's over 10 million per every single time that you get one of them. I personally grinded out about a 100 to 150,000 experience or reputation from this and I didn't get any of those, but there is a small chance of getting them, and if you do, it's a lot of money all at once. All in all, you're gonna be getting a decent amount of money from this Feathers of Mott anyhow, because they're worth 1.5K though. Now, one thing I do wanna mention before heading out to the last little bit is that if you have two people trying to open up a chest at the same time, only one of them is gonna open it. So if you happen to be the person that doesn't open it, you are still going to have to search this chest even though you are attempting to open it. So don't just run away. Make sure that the chest amount actually goes up before running away. The last element of the shifting tombs are going to be the sarcophagus here. Now the sarcophagus are shared by an entire group, so you don't actually have to go to every single sarcophagus to get them all. So let's say I am doing the sarcophagus everybody else should be running to try to do the rest of the sarcophaguses while I am completing this one because they don't actually have to open it manually themselves. As soon as I open the sarcophagus it will be shared between everybody. So as you can see here there are three sarcophagus on this level. As long as all three are opened we do not have to worry about each of us actually touching the sarcophagus. So that's gonna kind of tie into a little bit of strategy for these shifting tombs when I actually get to the overall group. Now if you haven't been watching the sarcophagus here, he is shooting out little blue plumes. Uh, I've heard that other people have different colors, uh, but all in all it's basically just a thing coming and hitting these platforms or the panels here. So what you're going to want to do is watch for a reset. That's that little yellow for my screen. Again, I've heard some people get green the little yellow kind of exclamation over his head. That's going to be the start of the pattern. So the first thing you're going to want to do is hit the first one that he launches out to. For this one, it is going to be the Krondus panel. And then as you can see, the second one that he launches out to is going to be the head panel. So we're going to have to run all the way around this. Uh, this is actually a pretty bad sarcophagus because you're going to have to run left, right, left. And then you're going to want to hit the last panel. So it's going to be Krondus, Het, and then Tumakin. 
So you're going to hit those three panels. You're going to hear a click as you press the last panel. If you do not hear that click or it says that it reset, you're going to have to check to make sure that you're actually hitting the right panels. You are most likely missing one of the panels. Then all you're going to do is make sure you left click open because until you do that, you did not have a sarcophagus open. You have to make sure to open them. Even if it's already unlocked, it doesn't mean that it's actually open. All in all, this is probably one of the easiest things to do, but people forget to do them all the time because it's not something that everybody has to do. I would recommend trying to get the sarcophagus done as you're running by. Uh, there's, again, a little bit of strategy to it in my opinion, but I would recommend trying to do any sarcophagus you happen to run by. That way you don't accidentally miss one. If you choose not to do any sarcophagus, you are also choosing to get kicked from groups. Uh, it is something that people rage about quite a bit when there's one sarcophagus left and the guy who's already opened up three of them has to open up a fourth one because everybody else has skipped past them. So make sure you are doing these. So we're just starting up a tomb here. First thing that I want to mention is always make sure that your minimap is as large as possible. Uh, you're going to be wanting to run away as far as possible from the exit because you're going to have to be making it back to the exit anyhow. So right at the beginning here we have a pretty large crystal group uh, which kind of sucks because we're going to have to mine through it manually. Uh, you do get one kind of the super cast to start out with but it's not enough to get you through all these minerals. Uh, if we were a little bit smarter about who's using which ones, then we might have been able to get through, but uh, it didn't happen in this case. So I'm going to disregard this chest because I know I'm going to be running directly back to it anyhow, and odds are somebody else is going to open it on my way up here because I'm going to go ahead and try to rush as far away from the exit as possible to get the furthest away sarcophagus. Seeing as how I am the furthest one away right now, I am trying to get the furthest away sarcophagus to speed up the group as a whole. Uh, now this is very important when you are doing it with people that are all on your dedicated group. Uh, if you're doing this in World 2, it's not quite as important because if you happen to be getting done a minute or so early, you can always just hop in with another group of people. So we just saw somebody else, again, another reason to have your mini map up. Uh, you saw that somebody else already is running up and doing this sarcophagus. Now we're going to cheat the system a little bit here. We're just going to stand here and get all the vases that are on this pathway from the parallel pathway. Now that's going to be speeding you up quite a bit because now I don't have to run all the way down that pathway. And like I was saying, I knew I was going to be running past this chest again. So I am going to be getting the chest on my way to the exit. I still do need some corruption, but these mining, the crystal corruption, are the slowest possible way of getting corruption. Uh, I know that there's a pretty big pathway here that I haven't actually gone down yet that most likely I am going to be able to get my corruption goal. Uh, if I don't get my full corruption goal, then I may have to mine some of the corruption, but I already had to run down here anyhow to get all the chests that I need. So this is going to be the fastest way of getting the corruption, seeing as how urns, vases, and vessels don't actually interrupt you while you are running around. So we're up to two chests. As I was mentioning just before, the sarcophagus are actually shared by everybody, so I didn't actually have to run to touch that sarcophagus because somebody else has already opened it. They ran the opposite direction of me when we first started. Uh, I don't actually have to touch that sarcophagus because they've already done it for the entire group. Now I have managed to miss the chest somewhere. So I'm going to go ahead and ask real quick. Uh, all you do is just type in chest. Oh, okay. Uh, so there was another chest by the exit. Uh, somebody else just called that out. Seeing as how probably everybody was missing a chest. Uh, they were all running around frantically trying to find it, and we didn't realize that there was one right where we started by the exit. Uh, as you can see here, there's a little brown uh, symbol of some sort. So I noticed that there was only three done, so I didn't know where that last chest is. Now that we have all four chests and we have a full corruption, we can go ahead and exit. 
if you are trying to exit extremely fast like you only have two seconds left you're gonna want to right click and quick exit because it will ask you confirmation uh, if you do not have everything fully completed so you shouldn't have a problem with that but just in case you do that quick exit is an option in case you are running really low on time as you can see right at the end there I did run out of rest or run out of run energy so it may be worthwhile to bring energy potions with you I did when I was doing this as a uh, grind I made sure to have I think like 24 energy potions on me at all times uh, and then as I was slowly using them I would just kind of slowly deplete until I ran out and then I'd go back to a bank and get 24 more it actually can be the difference between whether or not you complete a shifting tomb so I would recommend fully having at least like 10 to 15 on you at all times just to make sure you have run energy to get your way to the exit when you end up running to the furthest sarcophagus and have to run all the way back to where you began that happens sometimes there's nothing really you can do about it but having the energy potions can make all the difference hopefully you guys all enjoy videos like this if you do go ahead and hit the subscribe down button down below and leave a like if you have anything to say go ahead and leave a comment as always, have a good one.